On today's show, we have such an interesting topic of demons, discernment of spirits. We even do some deliverance on the show. Today, I have Barbie Breathit with me. You don't want to miss this. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. This is your time to arise, your time to step out in faith, to build, and to dream with God much bigger. Soaring high, flying free, spread your wings for all to see. Welcome to Eagles Arise with your host, Anna Werner. Welcome to Eagles Arise. Today, we are gonna talk about something that is very interesting, is discernment of spirits and seeing demons. Don't be afraid. Don't go anywhere, okay? Don't fear. The thing is, I don't feel like talking about the devil actually gives him power. Some people believe that, I don't. I believe as we openly discuss this, uh, his strategies as he comes at us in warfare, we actually gain victory over the enemy because God gives us information on how we can be remain victorious in the middle of warfare, okay? So I want to talk about this subject of discernment of spirits. We're going to do a little Bible study today together. What does the Word of God actually say about this? I want to also say this, you know, not everyone who is a seer sees demons. I've, I've, I can't tell you countless people I've chatted with and mentored personally who say, well, Anna, I only see heavenly things. I don't really see uh, demonic things. Some people do see demonic and then some people see both, like I'm someone who sees both. And there's some people that only see the demonic. And we're going to talk about that as well. So let's dive into the word, okay? Um, let's look at the scripture. If you have your Bible, it's always good that we get a biblical grounding for the subject we're talking about, right? So 1 Corinthians, I want you to flip to chapter 12. Now I cheated because I have it marked in my Bible, but you go there. And we're going to start in verse 7. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit to another faith by the same spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, and to another the fish effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing or discernment of spirits, to other various kinds of tongues, and to other the interpretation of tongues. Now the reason I brought the scripture is because right there it mentions discernment of spirit. And we know this from Ephesians 6 that our, we have a real war going on, right? Ephesians 6, it says that our war is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. So the, the demonic presence is real. It is all around us. And trust me, <laughs> trust me, as someone that is in ministry, if you are bringing light into this world, you will know that there is such a thing as warfare. But we are not to fix our eyes always on only what the enemy is doing. I just want to say that to you. It is so important that you don't just fix your eyes on only what the enemy is doing. Rather, fix your eyes on God. But to ignore, ignore that there's warfare is almost naive. I'm just going to tell you. And I want to share with you my journey of learning about how to, learning about discernment of spirits. When I was younger, when I was five, you know, I had my very first angelic encounter and then I saw nothing for many, many, many years. And then when I was in Brazil, so I was a missionary overseas. I lived in the country of Brazil and I was there working with kids. I had a, we had a ministry where we worked with kids that were in the slums and they were in the streets, you know, and there I was, and I'll never forget it. We're working with this one, there was this one little boy, he was doing glue, so he was hooked on glue, uh, doing drugs, and I looked at him, and as I looked at him, I could see something else. I looked right at him like I'm looking at you, and I could see this big demon 
on him. And, and demons don't look humanly, okay? Sometimes it looks like a mixture of animals put together. And I saw this thing, it looks scary. I saw some bull horns and pig nose. Don't get scared, I'm just telling you, okay? I looked at it and I thought, whoa, what is that? Now I didn't have anyone to tell me. At first I thought, I'm going crazy. What's wrong with me? Which sometimes you might feel that way. If you've ever, when your eyes start opening to see what is in, what's the demonic things around me, you might think, am I going crazy? I didn't know. So I was there training with Holy Spirit. You might say, now, how did you train Anna? Well, let me give you some tips. This was just the basic. Now, this is just basic training 101 on discernment of spirits. So first, I would see something, okay? And then I would ask, okay, I would see, I would never assume I know. I would ask the Holy Spirit. So you see something, then you ask, what is that? What am I seeing? Then, I would listen, get real quiet and listen and hear. And then I applied. So how that worked is like this. I'm sitting there with someone and I would see some demon behind them. And I would say, what is that God? So I didn't know what it was at first. I would say, well, what is that that's sitting there? And then I would see on the demon himself a word written, such as abuse, torture, drug addiction, or I didn't always see the word, I would hear it. Holy Spirit would say drug addiction, something like that, okay? And I would get quiet and I would listen and I say, God, what do you want me to do with this? See, I wouldn't jump ahead just because I have the knowledge. I would sit and listen. Now, what do I do with this, God? Okay, and then he would say, ask her about her mother. And I'd say, now I wouldn't say, I see a demon in you. No, okay, that'll freak someone out. I just said, hi, I just, and I'd start a conversation and I'd be like, wow, tell me about your mother. I just feel like the Lord really wants to ask me, have me ask you about your mother. And then she'd say, my mother was a drug dad. And then I'd say, okay, now I apply. And I say, you know what? I see this. And I would pray over them right then and there doing little mini deliverance 101 in Jesus name. I just take authority over that addiction. And I say that must go in Jesus name. So you just got a little mini session on deliverance 101. But listen, this show has so much more for you. When we come right back, I have a guest, Barbie Breathitt, who is just a wonderful expert on discernment of spirits and deliverance. You don't want to miss this. We'll be right back with more of Eagles Arise in just one moment. Are you a seer and you're longing for more training to take it to the next level? Hey, I'm Anna Warner, seer and author, and I'm so excited to tell you about my e-course, The Seer Anointing, Let's Take This to the Next Level. I wrote this eight session in-depth course on The Seer Anointing for people like you. You can take it and do it at your own pace, do it by yourself or take the course in a group dynamic. What you can expect from this course, I go over daily what it's like to be a seer, also discernment of spirits, what you do when you see angels and demons, as well as healing and the seer anointing. And I give your own personal heaven encounter invitation. 1 Corinthians 14 says to eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially that you may prophesy. So it is awesome and amazing for you to desire the gift of seeing. I so look forward to equipping and training you through this e-course. Go to AnnaWerner.org to purchase this one-of-a-kind course on video DVD. Click on the store, then click on Buy This Course under the Seer Anointing link. Go to AnnaWerner.org to purchase this anointed course on video DVD. Well, I am so excited to talk with Barbie Bretha and you today about discernment of spirits. She is amazing. I personally have ministered with her and I've seen her firsthand work with, I've seen lots of things, my goodness, where she's just ministers with absolute 
authority. God will show her something and she will pray over somebody and just take authority and really help set people free. That's the goal of this show. Barbie, I'm so excited you're here today. Thank you. It's an honor to be with you, Anna. I'm so glad you're here. There's some, no one else I'd want to have to ask Aww. these questions to about, you know, real practicalities of discernment of spirits. Their subject today is about demons and discernment yeah. of spirits. And, you know, I remember we were at Patricia King's yes. ministering together. I'll never forget this. There was this song that came on that was like, jump in the river. And I remember we're all like worshiping. And I look at you and I'm like, there's alligators in the river. <laughs> oh my. I like literally said that to you. And you look at me and you're like, I know, I see them too. Yes. And like we had a moment where I was yes. like, okay, she gets this. Yes. I can minister with her. <laughs> and I watched you. I watched you just, you know, with your beautiful smile. Isn't she beautiful? But with your beautiful smile, but you just carry such an authority mm -hmm. where you know with like with accuracy what what is coming against mm -hmm. uh, the presence of God, what is trying to interrupt the moment, right? And you're just like, in Jesus' name, go. And I would watch it absolutely someone just get set free. Yes. And I was like, come on, God, yeah. come on. <laughs> so uh, how did you grow like in this? When when I was reading your book, um, The Gateway to the Seer, I read about how in your childhood, mm -hmm. you actually would see many dark things. Yes. And you're pretty tormented by that. What was that about? What was that like? Well, as a child, I was very fearful. Um, I think one thing that's very important is not to put anything before our eyes that cause fear. Fear will paralyze you. And I would watch, uh, they had this movie, Dark Shadows, and my parents wouldn't allow us. So when the mom would leave, I would turn it on. and But then I'd be terrorized and I'd be fearful. I'm thinking, why am I doing this? And then at night when I'd be trying to sleep, I would see things on the sheets, like the bugs crawling, or I'd imagine a vampire. And then I thought vampires vaporize. And so then I was afraid to take showers because I thought he'd vaporize into the shower with me. And so my whole life began fear, fear based wow. and fear is the opposite of faith. And the Bible tells us that Jesus does not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. That's what I wanted. So when, when I repented of allowing fear into my life and focusing on things that were fearful or caused dread, then the opposite came in, faith came in. And then once faith comes, great faith then faith in God, then faith of God. And so it became a process of learning how to trade in fear and things that were detractors and step into authority and power of love that Christ gives us. Do you think going through that as a child helped you in growing your own authority? Absolutely. In, in deliverance, in yes. discernment? Because I, I kind of wonder if you hadn't had that upbringing because there's probably people watching this that can relate that yes. say, yeah, that was me, Barbie. I, you know, I get it. That's me. I had a childhood where it was very fearful, whether they had dreams and they saw things or they mm -hmm. went through a lot of cir circumstantial things in their life that gave them kind of a fearful little spirit, you know, and, but you're saying that you can take that fear and you can, with faith, you can turn it into something else. You can yes. take your fear and almost hand it to Jesus mm -hmm. and it's a trade right. for faith. Am I hearing that right? Yes, yes. That's very powerful. That is powerful because he didn't give us fear, so why receive it? Wow. So he doesn't want us to be fearful of anything, but full of faith and power and love. So the more that you love Jesus, the more he comes, the more he fills. And then you think, oh, he's my hero. He's my defender. He is my deliverer. And so he teaches us then how to become a deliverer because I knew how paralyzed and limited I was to be a fearful person. But once the fear was gone, I'm not afraid of anything. Wow. And so I know that through Jesus, I can do all things. He and then makes everything possible. God gave you authority. Yes. Talk about that. Like share with me a story where you've seen uh, real, like I want to hear some stories. One of my favorite ones, we went to Hong Kong and rented, we went down to the prostitute section where all the tarot card readers were and we rented one of their booths to do an evangelistic outreach. I thought the tarot card readers would leave, but they stuck around. So I yuck. said, well, let me, that's what I thought. Yuck. I thought, yuck. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit says, Barbie, she needs to be saved. I said, so, hey, why don't you sit down and let me 
give you a word from Jesus. And so when she sat down, he's told me, um, she started to go into a demonic trance because she was pretty well possessed. So I reached across the table and took a hold of her hand. Wow. So now I'm releasing the love of God to her mm -hmm. and I'm speaking to her spirit man. And I told her, I said, you know, the lover of your soul is Jesus. And he saw the three times you tried to take your own life where the enemy, the destroyer wanted to kill you. And he's been a hard taskmaster for you. And I said, and, and he wants to heal your irritable bowel syndrome. And I mean, so words of knowledge just began right, to come. Right, right. Tears coursed down her face. And I said, so would you like to accept Jesus, the lover of your soul as your savior? And the tarot card reader said, yes. She said the salvation prayer with me. And I said, I'll just take a deep breath and all that darkness is going to go. And she expelled all the demonic presences with her. The trance broke. She was, wow. she was set free. She went and got her mother. Same thing happened to her mother. Uh, God gave me her name. He told me she was his little songbird and she wow. had the fragrance of roses around her. And she goes, my name is Rose and I love to sing karaoke. <laughs> I said, that's the lover of your soul that knows everything about you and your knees need to be healed. I said, Holy Spirit's touching your knees right now. Grabbed her hand, imparted the healing, cast the demons out. She got saved. Now, I love that story. Here's why. When you, you actually prayed for the, just for y'all to catch this, you actually prayed for the miracle. Yep. Before the demons got cast out. Yep. Then the demons got cast out. Then she got her salvation. Yep. I like that. Because mm -hmm. see, sometimes I've heard it preached, you know, because that one scripture, you know, you don't go cast out the demons because they'll come back sevenfold seven times until worse. they're saved. Yeah. But I've seen that witness that myself in, in Nepal, my husband, you were missionaries that, you know, they, they were into Hinduism. So they're like, yeah. is it, they believe Thousands in a billion of, gods, yeah. right? <laughs> and so yeah. we, you know, come in and saying, can we pray for you? Sure, you know, yeah. we'll let, pray for, anyone can pray for us, you know. But as we, we saw the entrance was miracles. Yes. And uh, we would do the miracle and then the deliverance, and then the salvation. Yes. So I love that story. That was really powerful. That's what Philip did. Yeah. He went into places. Exactly. He performed signs and wonders and miracles. Then they got saved. Wow. That's our calling card. That is our calling card. What would you say are some like practical ways then people can grow in discernment of spirits? Uh, interpreting their dreams, because God's going to train a seer while you're sleeping, he teaches a spiritual warfare at night. So if something negative comes into your dream, learning how to use your weapons, spiritual weapons, the name of Jesus, the blood, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, all of those things that we can take up and do warfare in dreams, in visions, through your prayer, uh, just intimacy with Jesus because the closer that we get to him, he, we just melt into him and we become one with him. So now he has all authority in heaven and earth. So when we are in Christ, we have all authority in heaven and earth. So knowing that when we say something, we're ambassadors for God and the, all of heaven is going to back that up. So we don't have to doubt or wonder. We just know that wow. what we say carries right. power, carries authority because we're joint heirs with Christ. Wow. And he's the one that performs it. The Holy Spirit goes before us. He surrounds us. He's our deliverer, our healer. And we know that's God's plan for us. He wants everyone delivered, everyone healed. Thank you, Barbie, so much. So when we come right back, I want to talk to you and address something. Do you only see dark things? I want to share with you what that might be about. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Eagles Arise in just one moment. Hi, I'm Anna Warner, and I am so excited to announce this new mentorship program. Weekly, we are going to have teachings. I'm going to personally teach you on the seer anointing, different aspects of the seer anointing. You'll have the ability to send in your questions because we're going to do a live Q&A session. Also, we're going to have some surprise seasoned prophets and seers join in. I'm not going to tell you who. It's going to be a surprise, but I'm excited about that. And then as well, I think it's so important that you personally connect with other seers all around the world. I feel like it's so important for you to find your niche, find your group of people where you can dialogue personally about the seer anointing. There's going to be an online community where you can connect. In one month, you can expect to grow exponentially in the seer anointing. I really look forward to mentoring you. Go to AnnaWerner.org to enroll in Anna Werner's online Eagles mentorship program. 
A few of the topics this mentorship program will cover are how to see. This includes practicals and activations, biblical grounding for the seer anointing, tips for how to operate with the gift in church, ministering with angels, open versus closed visions, miracle realm, healing from rejection for the seer and prophet, combating witchcraft and demonic activity, why do I see only dark things, spiritual warfare that follows you home. This is what you can expect, one weekly teaching covering many and more of the topics already mentioned, four live Q&A sessions where Anna will be personally answering your sent-in questions, notes from each week, weekly activations, a surprise guest teaching from a seasoned seer or prophet, a way to connect with seers across the globe, tech support for the program so we can take the stress off of you, personal healing, deliverance, and breakthrough prayer covering for your ministry. Log on to AnnaWerner.org to enroll in Anna Werner's Online Eagles Mentorship Program right now. All of Anna's books are available on Amazon. You can find more videos and other resources available on her website, AnnaWerner.org. Wow, that was such a, a powerful, um, just last segment with Barbie Breathett on here. Uh, when we were talking about discernment of spirit, something uh, rose to just, I want to talk about or mention. I have had so many people ask me this question, Anna, what about if I only see dark things? What about if I never see heavenly things and every time I go into encounter, uh, I just have dark things come up? Now there can be a lot of answers for that, um, whether you, op you're op like Barbie mentioned, uh, opening your eyes to something that's not of God, that can invite that in. Uh, there's other things, there can be witchcraft, whether you're involving yourself in witchcraft, you maybe have parents that are involved in witchcraft or grandmama that's involved in witchcraft, that could be something as well. But I wanna address something that I've never heard said before, but yet I have seen this time after time, after time. And I'll be honest with you, okay? I don't have the theology all behind this yet. I'm, I'm working on it. I know I'll, I'm probably gonna write a book on it eventually, but I'm just telling you through experience, my research has been through experience. When I've prayed for someone who carries this, it's called performance spirit. And I pray for them to get delivered of performance spirit, often then, they start to see the heavenly things. So are you wondering what I'm saying? Performance spirit, well, what does that mean? It's like this. If you are raised as a, it usually starts, performance spirit comes on you for many different reasons, but often it comes on you when you're a young child. As a child, perhaps you had to perform or be a certain way to get love from your parents, for the, those around you, even if you struggled with acceptance from your peers, so you felt like you had to perform or be something to get love, that would be when a performance spirit, is what I'm calling it, comes on you. So at that point, what happens is there's a breakdown between you and your heavenly Father where you start to feel like people that had this at a childhood often then later feel like they have to perform for God's love. And when they feel like that, there is actual a breakdown in the relationship between you and your heavenly father. And when there's that breakdown, often then you're seeing more of the dark things. Now I'm telling you, I don't have the theology behind it, but I have seen this time after time after time, over and over and over, that if you're struggling at all. So right now, I wanna ask you this, because I know I'm talking to someone right now that is struggling with this. You're sitting there going, Anna, that's me. I can relate. I, I always feel like I'm not good enough, like I have to be better. Um, you might even struggle with being really critical on yourself and just being like, oh, I'm not doing it good enough, right? You know, and what that is, is you're really just struggling with not only love from the Father, but even self-acceptance. At some place, you struggle just to reject yourself over and over and over. I wanna pray for you 
because I feel that someone's going to get set free. And when I pray for you over this one thing you want, you're going to start being able to see the heavenly things, the goodness of God, the good things. So Father, in Jesus name, I take authority over that performance spirit and I tell it to go right now. Lord, I pray for even self-rejection to be broken off of you who's watching this. Lord, I pray that um, there would be a connection, a reconnection right now between you and the Father. Now see what I just saw, I literally just saw some one of you just sitting right back up on the Father's lap. God's going to take you through a season. Don't worry about what you're seeing, okay? Don't worry about getting the revelation. He wants to take you in a season where He's going to speak back over you. This is who you are. This is how I see you. This is how much I love you. And this is how much I value you. Amen. One more thing I want to just address before this show closes is this. You don't go taking on every demon. Okay, can I say that? God might give you discernment what's there in the spirit. And at that point, that is where you, you don't just go take on that demon. You don't charge it unless God has given you the authority. So when you see it and you get discernment what it is, before you go running, charging ahead, please, please, this is like a mama talking right now. Please go before the Lord and say, God, what am I supposed to do with this? And maybe your role is just to go to pray, to intercede on behalf of that person, or just go to prayer and say, in Jesus name, I pray, da, 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 da. But don't go doing deliverance unless God has told you. Let me tell you a story of what happened to me, where I, I'm, I learned this the hard way, y'all. My husband and me were in a part of India as missionaries and we, we felt like, oh, we just want to go on a prayer walk in this one area that was heavily induced with Hindu temples where they still did. Um, there was even animal slaughters in there. There was all kinds. There's even human trafficking. We found out later in that area. And we said, oh, let's just go prayer walk down there. It's a good thing to do to prayer walk. Right. But see, we didn't have the direction of the Lord to do that. We just felt we're going to go prayer walk and combat all those spirits down there. We went, we got out of that little rickshaw, the little rickshaw cart and when I got out of it I couldn't even get within 300 yards before I got dizzy and literally started throwing up all over the road because the warfare and the witchcraft was so heavy there okay so I learned the hard way I learned you don't go unless God has given you authority and when he does then you take authority in Jesus name. Well, I hope you feel empowered and fear has been broken off of you. You have Christ within you. Now it's time to rise up. Thanks for joining us today on Eagles Arise. <music>